Okay, in our video series on infectious medicine, in this video, we are going to talk about severe complicated malaria. In my previous video on malaria, I talked about the management of non-falciparum malaria and uncomplicated falciparum malaria. I talked about the profile access and management in detail in that video. You can check out the link in the description below. In this video, we are going to talk about severe complicated malaria management. Malaria is said to be severe, complicated if there is impaired consciousness. It means that the malaria, falciparum malaria has now entered the brain. It has become cerebral malaria. Patient is now developing seizures, impaired consciousness and you should consider lumbar puncture in that case. HB is less than 8 as we said that malaria proliferates in the red blood cells and causes a destruction of red blood cells, a rupture of red blood cells. There is hemolytic anemia in malaria and if the hb is less than 8 it means that there is severe damage to the rbcs and that is a severe complicated malaria if there is acute kidney injury because the hemoglobin is been broken down and that hemoglobin now gets stuck in the kidney hemoglobin urea takes place and that hemoglobin urea causes acute kidney injury that is a severe complicated malaria if the patient is going into shock not maintaining blood pressures if the patient is developing hypoglycemia since parasites consume plasmodium consumes all the glucose patient is at risk of severe hypoglycemia in severe complicated malaria and patient can develop ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Patient can have spontaneous bleeding as we said that plasmodium causes thrombocytopenia. Plasmodium can lead to DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy in which there is consumption of platelets. That consumption of platelet, that thrombocytopenia can lead to spontaneous bleeding. Patient can has, have acidosis due to lactate buildup and the parasitemia on the slides is greater than 10%. That is considered to be a severe complicated malaria. If you find any one of these, it means that the patient has now developed severe complicated ma uh, malaria and that patient needs aggressive management. Poor prognostic indicators of malaria include peripheral blood schizons. As we said that malaria proliferates in the red blood cells, it replicates in the red blood cells. In the replication process, it forms schizons in the red blood cells. And presence of schizons in the red blood cell is a poor prognostic factor. It means that after some time, these RBCs are going to get ruptured due to the replication of plasmodium. If you see elevated serum lactate, it means acidosis is taking place. Since there is anemia, since there is hemolytic anemia, destruction of the RBCs, glucose and met normal metabolism is disturbed and patient has acidosis, lactic acid buildup due to hypoxia to the peripheral tissues. And if the patient has increased age, these are the three poor prognostic indicators that this patient is not going to perform well due to malaria. Now, if the patient has severe falciparum malaria, how do you manage it? You have two main options. The main drug, the main regimen used for severe complicated malaria is artisonate regimen. If artisonate regimen is not there, then you can use quinine regimen. But remember that artisonate treatment is the treatment of choice. Artisonate regimen is superior than quinine regimen. Now, how do you give artisonate regimen? You give artisonate regimen 2.4 mg per kg IV. We are giving the drugs IV intravenously because the patient is in comatose state, because the GCS is down, because there is impaired consciousness. In that case, in cerebral malaria case, patient is unconscious, you have to give drugs IV. In our previous video, we discussed that we give the drugs orally. But in this video, in this case, in severe complicated malaria, we are going to give the drugs IV. You give them at zero hours, 12 hours and 24 hours at the presentation at 12 hours and at 24 hours. You give the drugs at specific points in time. You hit the cycle at certain points so that the parasite cannot proliferate in blood. Side effects of artisanate regimen include delayed hemolysis, delayed hemolysis at 7 to 21 days, which is the normal, which is self-limiting after the treatment. So you should check the HB after 14 days, whether the HB is not going down because there is a side effect of delayed hemolysis after artisanate regimen. If artisanate regimen is unavailable, or if you do not have artisanate regimen, then you can use quinine regimen. But remember, artisanate regimen is superior than quinine. 
क्विनिन रेजिमेंट इज यूज वेन आर्टिसोनेट इज नॉट अवेलेबल लोडिंग डोज ऑफ ट्वेंटी एम जी पर के जी इज गिवन ओवर फोर आवर्स एंड देन टेन एम जी पर के जी इज गिवन एवरी एट आवरली ओवर फोर्टी एट आवर्स अंटिल द पेशेंट इज कॉन्शियस एंड अंटिल द पेशेंट कैन टेक ओरल मेडिकेशन You can work to oral 600 mg TDS for five to seven days when the patient is conscious and can take oral drugs. Side effects of quinine include synchronism and hyperinsulinemia. What is synchronism? Synchronism is basically hearing loss, tinnitus, flushing, nausea. These are the signs of synchronism that are classical for quinine. tinnitus and hearing loss classical signs of synchronism after quinine regimen and hyperinsulinemia is important because as we discussed in previous video that with malaria there is hypoglycemia with malarial parasite infection there is a risk of hypoglycemia because that parasite will consume all the glucose in the blood for its proliferation so patient will be having hypoglycemia due to malaria and if you give quinine regimen that quinine regimen will cause excessive secretion of insulin and patient will further go into hypoglycemia so you must look patient's blood glucose regularly you must monitor patient blood glucose every two hourly when you are giving quinine regimen because that there is a risk of hypoglycemia in these patients and you give quinine regimen with doxycycline for 7 days doxycycline is a tetracycline and is not given in children because it affects the growth of teeth it is contraindicated in children so for children you can replace doxycycline with clarithromycin and if the artisonate is available you can combine it with artisonate as well but remember doxycycline must be combined with quinine regimen you have to monitor the patient when you are giving this regimen artisonate regimen or quinine regimen and the patient is having severe complicated malaria patient is at risk of developing hypoglycemia because the parasite will proliferate and consume all the glucose in blood you have to check blood glucose four hourly and if patient is on quinine regimen you have to check it every two hourly you check the hb you check the creatinine to see acute kidney injury you check the clotting profile that whether that patient is going into dic or not if the patient is having severe bleeding you must check clotting profile that patient might be developing dic disseminated intravascular clotting you must check the electrolytes you do daily parasite count and it fluctuates with the life cycle of parasite so these are this is how you monitor the patient who is having severe complicated falciparum malaria in summary we talked about the presentation of a patient with severe complicated falciparum malaria we talked about the poor prognostic factors we talked about the two regimens in which artisonate regimen is preferred and if it is not available you can use quinine regimen artisonate regimen how do you give delayed hemolysis is a side effect quinine regimen combined with doxycycline and side effects include synchronism and hyperinsulinemia check the glucose and check all these things regularly in a patient with severe complicated falciparum malaria if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine and emergency medicine playlist the link of those playlists is given in the description below thank you very much